Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick mini review uh, about the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G from Blackmagic Design. This is a pretty new product. It's only been available for about six weeks. I got mine as part of the initial shipment that became available. I've had it for about six weeks. And this is a pretty cool little device that lets you output video from your computer into a video switcher or to a monitor. Um, so, yeah, there's several different uses for this. So, I'm just kind of go over what the device is, and then we'll actually pull up some software and show you how you can use this thing. So, so this is, as mentioned, the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G from Blackmagic Design. This is a tiny little box that basically allows you to output video from video-related software, so things like Premiere, uh, Final Cut Pro, After Effects, those kinds of things. Uh, and you output directly to a monitor or to a video production system. Uh, connects to the computer using Thunderbolt, so it looks like a USB-C, but it's actually a Thunderbolt 3 connector. Uh, same connector, different, different signal. And then on the other side, you have an SDI output, and then, again, that does 3 gig SDI, so 1080p at up to 60 frames per second. And then you have an HDMI output, which you can hook to anything you want. And I suppose the most common use for that would probably be to go to a monitor. So, yeah, the connections are actually pretty simple. You plug in your Thunderbolt cable on one side and plug that and plug that into your computer. And on the other side, you can plug in a monitor or video switcher or whatever you want. And both of these outputs are output are active at, at the same time, so you can use both of them simultaneously if you'd like. Um, so, so what would this actually be useful for? So, for me, there's a couple things that I found to, to be very useful. Uh, first, first main one is video editing. So, you got your Adobe Premiere or whatever open and you're editing and you want to see a full screen version of your of your program. Well, this allows you to do that. This allows you to connect up uh, an external monitor uh, so you can view the exact signal as it really exists on the timeline. Um, yes, you can typically use like an HDMI output on a laptop uh, and then use the playback settings in the software in order to output yeah, video full screen, but there's some problems with that. First of all, um, you may likely be dealing with res some resolution scaling that you don't necessarily want to. You know, computers tend to output the highest resolution that the connected monitor can support. And if that isn't that's the resolution of your timeline, then it's having to do some scaling, and the scaling in your monitor might not or scaling your, in your computer might nece not necessarily be as high quality as um, what's available in your monitor. Uh, so there's that problem. But the other one is frame rate. So most of the time when we plug in an external monitor to one of our computers, it's outputting at 60 frames per second. You know, if we're, if we're editing a 60 frame per second timeline, that's fine. Everything works okay, works, works okay that way. But if we're out editing at any other frame rate, say 24 or 30, it's having to do some weird interpolation on those, basically, basically between the difference of those two frame rates. So if you've got, if you're got a 24 frame per second timeline, it's having to repeat some of those frames on the 60 frame output that's going to your monitor and it might not necessarily be doing a great job of it so this eliminates that both of those problems it basically may, makes it so whatever settings your timeline uses so whether it's the 1080p 720p whatever um, this outputs that exact resolution and outputs the exact frame rate so if your timeline is 30 frames per second you get 30 frames per second on the output no weird scaling no weird frame skipping no words no weird uh, frame doubling any of that uh, so it, it's really useful for that the other thing is a lot of these a lot of times our computers if we've gone through a calibration procedure to calibrate for a particular monitor that HDMI output that we're using is now going through a calibration that's for a device that we're not necessarily uh, sending the video signal to so if we got our got a laptop and we want to play it through a video switcher it might be applying a color correction for your monitor so your colors aren't right additionally the color systems that are used by computers are a little bit different than the color systems used by video and so you can have some weird just weird conversion issues so your colors might not look right things might look uh, too washed out or too uh, too contrasty and something like this makes sure that whatever signal is coming out of here is exactly what's on your timeline. Because it, it, you know, it's talking directly to the software. It's not having to go through your video card and whatever uh, changes it decides to make. Um, so the other uh, way I've used this quite a bit in the limited time that I've had it is for video playback. As I mentioned on a previous video here on this channel, these devices are a great way to interface video editing software into a video production system. So 
we've got some video that we need to play back. We, we need to do some play out as part of uh, production. Well, we can, we can render it and put it on a card and put it in a video playback device, or we just play it directly out of our video editing software, and a device like this makes that possible. So plug it in, uh, drop the video on your timeline, and hit the space bar or whatever, and the video is playing directly into your video production system. Uh, and a production that I was involved in just a short time ago was a volleyball tournament. We captured, we had somebody wandering around the, the facility with a camera, and they were capturing video, um, kind of things behind the scenes, things that were going on, or B-roll or anything like that. We'd, we dumped that into a computer, take the card, plug it into a computer, edit it right on the timeline, then it was time to show it, and literally just hit the space bar to play it. No rendering or anything like that. And so it saved a lot of time. And this, this product is what we used to do that. So uh, with that said, let me actually connect it up and show you examples of each of these things. So I'm going to pull out my laptop here. And I'm going to hook this thing up. So I've got uh, Ultra Studio Monitor 3G, plugging in with a Thunderbolt cable. Again, this is Thunderbolt, not USB-C. So if you're going to if you're going to do this, make sure your computer actually supports Thunderbolt. Uh, basically, all Macs do. Windows PCs on the higher end tend to. This is a Dell XPS 15, and it does. I've got two versions of this this laptop: one that's from last year and one that's from three years ago, and it works great with both of them. I was also able to get this to work with a MacBook Pro. It's an older model that I have, and it worked just fine. Uh, however, that computer actually had a th has a Thunderbolt 2 port, and so I had to get one of Apple's Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapters in order to talk to this. And the other issue I should mention is uh, that the, the Apple Thunderbolt adapter does not supply power. This device takes power from your computer, and so if you're going to use this with an older laptop that only has Thunderbolt 2, you go through an adapter, you, you need to go through some other Thunderbolt device that can actually supply power. So I used a Thunderbolt dock and that worked great. So uh, no issues there. So with that, um, we're gonna go to Blackmagic Design's website. I'm gonna show you just briefly where you find the software for this. Once you plug in the device, you'll need to download, download the driver and that's available here. Let me zoom in a little bit. And it's available under the capture and playback section of the support page on the site. And if you scroll down, this is the, the desktop video. This is the software that you want. And in most cases, people watching this are going to want this 11.7 version. If you happen to have one of the brand new uh, MacBooks that uses the M1 processor, then you'll need this desktop video 12 beta 1. But again, that's really only for the M1. So in that one case, download that, old, that newer version. For everybody else, download the older version as of the time of this recording. If you're watching this video long after I record, then you might just get the latest non-beta version from the site. So from there, I'm on Windows, so I click on the Windows button there and go, and go ahead and click on Download Only or Supply Registration Details. And then, then you install that, and you want to install that when your video editing software is not running. Um, so I've already done that ahead of time. And if we go into under Preferences and then Playback, we will now see the device in there. So we'll see right here, Blackmagic Playback. So we just want to make sure that that is checked. Uh, you can go into the setup here if you want, and you can choose which device you're going to use if you happen to have multiple. And you can choose the color gamut that you want to use. Uh, this supports your typical Rec. 601 for standard def, Rec. 709 for high def, and then you've got Rec. 2020 for your uh, HDR as well. And you've got another option, a couple options over here to select whether to scale up or scale down for resolutions that are not officially supported by the device. Um, so I usually choose the scale up on that as well. So once you do that, I'm actually going to connect what you, guys, what you guys see here. So I'm going to now connect the SDI output of this into my video switcher. So, now, so I've got Thunderbolt, the device going into SDI. And then if we take a look oh, over here, let me go full screen with that. There we go. So this is my timeline from Adobe Premiere. So as I'm scrubbing through, it's showing what I'm editing, basically. So and if I, and I hit the playback button, and it, there it is. It's pl actually playing the video. So yeah, so as I'm scrubbing through here, uh, go to the video. This, this video is actually... This is the video coming out of the Ultra Studio uh, there. So, 
Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, it. This device does support other software as well. I mentioned it uh, works with Adobe After Effects. It works with Final Cut Pro on the Macs. Um, it actually will work with Photoshop if you want to take a, a, a still of uh, your something, a photo that you're editing in Photoshop and see it on an external monitor as a way to export uh, a photo through this device to a monitor. It doesn't update in real time, so it's not necessarily a great workflow, but it can be done. So, anyway, I want to show, show you one other thing before, before I go here. So, if you're using this for video playout, you'll want to go into your sequence settings here. Set, it, set the right frame rate, and then set the right resolution for whatever you happen to be running through your switcher. And then the conversion, if, there is, if, it, if any conversion is required, it's being done inside of Premiere. And if you want to have an uh, ultra high quality uh, version of a clip, if it, again, if it's not the native resolution, you can just go ahead and render the video and then play back the rendered video. Uh, and, and it should work just fine. So anyway, this has been a great solution for me for doing video playback. So anyway, uh, a little more about the device. Uh, it is it sells for about $115, so it's pretty inexpensive. Um, and they also have another version of this uh, that's used for capture, video capture, so video going into the computer, and that's called the Ultra Studio Recorder 3G. Same price, so both devices are the same price. Uh, Unfortunately, they don't have pass-throughs, and so you are tying up your Thunderbolt port, port with like each one of those things, and there's no easy way to you do a Thunderbolt hub. So, yeah, if you only got a handful of ports, this might be a little bit inconvenient if you want to try and do both. If you need both capture and playback at the same time, then you might want to look into one of the other Ultra Studio uh, products, like the Ultra Studio uh, Mini 3, 3G, uh, which has both ca capture and playback in one box. A uh, little bit more money, it's about 500 but uh, anyway. anyway, this is a great thing. I just I keep this in my toolkit because it has become so handy for productions. Like we got video we need to get out of a laptop uh, onto a uh, onto a video switcher, or just want to have somebody wants to have a bigger monitor uh, that's showing the right colors, the right resolution, the right frame rate from their timeline. It's been a good a utility for that. So anyway, if you guys have any questions about this thing, you can leave those in the comments down, section down below, and I will try and answer as best I can. However, my schedule is pretty busy, so hopefully the community can help weigh in as well with any questions that you, that you might have. So if you do happen to buy this, I'd really appreciate you using uh, the link that's shown there down on the uh, bottom of the screen. Uh, that is an affiliate link. I uh, can use that to purchase from Amazon, DVE Store, or uh, B&H Photo. I'm trying to steer people towards DVE Store. They're a great company, uh, small company uh, that knows video. They have great customer service, amazing customer service, actually. And I'm trying to send as much business their way as I possibly can. So if there's something you want to buy and you live here in the U.S. and probably Canada as well, you can use that link to buy from DVE Store. That is my preferred vendor uh, for people purchasing through this channel. So anyway, that's about it. So thanks, everyone, for watching, and have a great day.